What's up YouTube, Oliver here. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the Wacom Intuos Pro Medium Tablet. This is the 2018 edition. So I have this tablet here and it basically it's a, a graphics tablet. It allows you to um, basically draw using a pen in graphical applications or I suppose you know any applications that you might want to use on your Mac or PC. It's a very useful tool. Obviously, you, you know, when you think of something like this, you'd probably think that it was something for, you know, a digital artist or someone that does a lot of drawing and sketching and, you know, using sort of brush-based tools. But you can actually use this for so many different applications. I'm going to do some demonstrations of what I would use it for later in this video. Um, but just to talk a little bit about the tablet first. So basically, this is what it is. Um, as you can see, it has eight uh, buttons going down the side here and also a touch ring. The touch ring is basically just a touch sensitive surface and you basically can just sort of run your finger around it and uh, basically that allows you to you know, issue basically keyboard commands and that sort of thing. So you can, you can use it and run your finger along the touch surface and you can have it set up to do all sorts of things like scroll or, you know, increase maybe the size of a font or move through your video timeline by a frame. Uh, you can use it to select a specific color. You can use it to rotate. There's so many different things you can use it for. And um, basically the tablet has four different function buttons at the top, four at the bottom, and as I mentioned, it has this touch ring, which also has the center button to toggle the options. And the touch ring can be used for uh, four different possible combinations. And again, a little bit later in the video, we'll have a little look at how the settings can be adjusted, but there's absolutely so many possibilities with this because the driver settings are really, really good. They allow you to really customize the, each button and the function of the tablet very specifically to different applications. So you can specify the application in the settings and then you can really tweak all of the different options. There's also a number of on-screen controls like radial menus and on-screen menus which you can set up. Um, and they're quite useful because you can put all sorts of commands in there and then if you're using the pen to navigate, you know, it's a great way to do it. One thing to be aware of, basically the tablet can work and it also works as a trackpad, basically in, in a, instead of a mouse. And um, the difference with a track with a graphics tablet is that it maps absolute to the screen, whereas a mouse is relative. So what that means is the corners of the trackpad are basically the corners um, of your computer monitor. So when you put the pen in this corner, it would literally be in that corner of the, the computer screen, unlike with a mouse where you have to kind of drag it around the desk all the time. Um, to kind of get it to go to the top, you kind of have to move it and drag it up. The thing with this Wacom tablet is actually that it's mapped absolute, which is really good for designers because it allows them to really accurately, you know, work with a sort of canvas. Um, but it does take a bit of getting used to. You can map it in different ways. And th this tablet comes in three different sizes. I'm using the medium here, which I think works perfect with the 27 inch iMac. Although you can get it in um, a large size as well and also a small, but the small versions, the older generation. Now this new tablet, the reason why I chose this is because it does have Bluetooth, which means it works perfectly with my Mac or MacBook, my iMac or MacBook, because the previous versions um, used a wireless kit which you had to buy separately and that basically consisted of like a USB dongle, USB type A that you had to plug into the computer. If I was using that with my MacBook that would mean I'd have to have a dongle to convert the USB-C port to USB-A and then have that plugged in and it would be a nuisance. Um, so I wanted to go with the Bluetooth model. This actually does have a good battery life as well. I found it lasts me about three to four days depending on use. Now, if you wanted this to replace your mouse or you know trackpad, if you're used to using something like the Magic Mouse or the Apple trackpad or anything like that, you'll know that you can plug it in and it lasts you a couple of months maybe without having to charge it and you can just forget about it. This, you will be thinking about it a lot more because unfortunately it does need to be charged up. But, you know, that's one of those things. Now, to talk about the price of this. I actually purchased this myself on Amazon. Uh, I'll leave all the links in the description if you're interested. Now, it is actually a really useful tool. As you'll see in a moment, you can you know, do so many uses for it. I'm actually, as my job, I'm actually a solutions architect. Um, and you can use this for you know doing a lot of your kind of modeling and diagrams, drawing up quick wireframes and all sorts of things. It can be really useful in tools like OmniGraffle and you know, as well as things like Photoshop, Quark Express and so many different things. Um, and it's a really great tool. 
So basically, this is currently available on Amazon, I believe at the time of filming, around about £320. And as I say, I'll leave all the links in the description that you need. However, you can also get a further £10 off if you use Prime Now. And Prime Now is a great service because it means um, you can basically have your items delivered within two hours or even as little as an hour if you're an Amazon Prime member, depending on where you live. So you'd be watching this video and an hour later you could have one of these tablets. And with your first two purchases, you can get £10 off. At the moment, I believe there's a special promotion on. Um, and I will leave all the details in the description if you're interested. So you could get a further £10 off this price. And by the way, this video isn't sponsored or anything. Um, but I do. I am an Amazon Prime member and I do genuinely like their Prime Now service. Um, so yeah, basically, you can get this at a really good price. Although it might be pricey for some people. There are, um, you know, maybe pre-owned ones you could have a look at. There's some, you know, used but excellent condition. Sometimes Amazon have these deals. So it's, it's worth having a look at that. Um, you know, really worth checking that out. Um, there is also an entry-level Intuos, which I used to have. I used to have the slightly older one, which was called the Intuos Photo. Now there's just the one called the Intuos. Um, it's basically a slightly smaller tablet, but um, it does work really well. Really nice piece of kit. It's only around about 70 to 80 pounds, you know, so if you want something a bit cheaper, you know, maybe go for that. It, it does have action buttons in different locations and all that sort of thing. The express keys, I believe we call them. Um, for me, I think the pro version is so much better. It's a better size. It has the touch rings. So that's why I chose it, um, you know, but it's, it's, I suppose, personal choice. And uh, just before I have a look at how you could actually use this, I will point out I have had a number of issues. I'm using this on my Mac. I've got the latest Wacom driver, and I've got the you know the latest release of uh, macOS High Sierra, the public version. I'm not using any beta software or anything like that. And I've noticed that I have had a few issues. The driver is very temperamental sometimes, and it's worth pointing that out. When you're paying like 300 pounds for a professional tool, you expect that it's going to work really well. And I will point out, because I like to be honest, at least at the moment, there's some issues with the driver. I use a tool called Sketch sometimes. It's an application for doing sort of UX wireframing and all that kind of thing. Um, you know, I've been using that a little bit and unfortunately this Wacom tablet doesn't work with it. For whatever reason, I don't know, there's an issue with the driver and I did do some posts on some forums. I found out that lots of other people have also been having the same issue. So, you know, it's obviously something to do with Wacom. I've heard that someone filed a ticket with Wacom and they did respond saying that they were aware of the issue and it would be fixed in the next update. But it's just one of those things, unfortunately. I have also had a lot of problems with it losing connection and it just const constantly dropping out. You know, sometimes if the driver crashes, you've got to either log out and log back in or completely restart your computer to get the driver to reload. It has a few bugs. I mean, generally, I would say about maybe 90% of the time it works fine. And when it works, it's perfect. Really useful tool. But there are a few bugs. Just one of those things. Um, I'll just show you a couple of other things. So basically, you get the pen with it. Now, this is a 8K pen. Gets 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. Now, on some applications, it's not you know, that they don't have the compatibility with being able to tell uh, the sort of different levels of pressure, but something like Photoshop, where you're using a brush tool, perfect. Now, I'm also a photographer. I take pictures when I go out and about, you know, a lot of nature pictures and things with my DSLR camera. You can check some of them out on Instagram uh, if you want. My links will also be down in the description. But basically, I use this so much for touching up my photos because you can you can create a custom brush and then you can basically set it so that what it does is it's got the uh, transfer opacity is set to pen pressure and then you can use layer masks to kind of just paint adjustments on really really lightly and subtly and then you can press hard to apply more really useful tool um, but basically that's the pen and it comes with this stand so you can either have it lying flat or you can have it kind of upright in the stand however you want that to be on your desk it is a good quality stand it's it's made of a decent material and you can twist it to open it up and basically all of your spare nibs um, are inside there so you know that basically you get like eight different spare uh, nibs for the pen they all come in there which is great um, and it does have a really good quality feel obviously even the pen itself has basically like four different buttons I guess you could say the click of the pen tip is a button there's two buttons on the on here and then you've also got the eraser which is a button and the, the eraser is pressure sensitive as well as the pen so it's, it's a really useful tool 
Now you can have you configure this because the express keys, like I say before, can be configured for any application. So it's a really, really useful way to be able to use this. Um, but yeah, um, enough of me talking about how, how useful it actually is. Let me show you some of my uses for this tool. Okay, so um, basically this is the tablet. I've tried to set this angle up as best as I can so that you can actually see what I'm doing um, while I'm actually using it on the computer as well. But basically, as I was mentioning before, what happens is wherever you tap the stylus, that's where the pen would appear in the screen. And then you've got your eight function buttons and your touch ring. So I'm going to just show you, and I'm going to try and keep this fairly concise because I could go on, but I want this video to kind of be a reasonable length, how I'll use a Wacom tablet in various applications. Um, but if you want to see a more detailed tutorial on specific applications, please do leave a comment and I will let you know. Um, well, first you have a quick look in the system preferences um, and I'll show you how you can configure your tablet. So if we go to Wacom tablet settings here, it tells you, you know, what interest per M and then all your tools are down here. You can buy additional um, types of pens and all sorts, but you click on those. So for example, if I go to touch, you can see I've got different settings for Safari and Launchpad. And then functions are all your buttons, which I've configured a little bit more. So for example, I've got Photoshop open at the moment. If I go to Photoshop, you can see that um, I have different buttons for things. So for example, the fourth key down here is a step backward and so on and the touch ring is configured to do things like brush size which is amazing um, rotate scroll etc and then you can also choose how you want your display mapped and you can also these are all your um, on-screen panels um, so you can have your radial menu which you can have as many of these as you want by doing plus and minus and then you can have you know all these different things come up and you know various different settings. So uh, basically we will have a little look at that right now. Okay, so I'll show you how I might do something in Photoshop. So this is a photograph that I took of this cow that was in a field in Northumberland. Um, and basically if I want to go ahead and make some changes to that, what I would usually do, because I try and be non-destructive with my editing, is I would create some sort of layer mask. So, you know, you can quite easily go down here. Um, let's create, well, let's create an adjustment layer. Let's, what I'd like to do is I'd like to add a bit more brightness into the cow's face, just so I can see its eyes a bit more because it was getting late in the day and it's a bit of a sunset. And I think the front end of the cow, you can't really see its facial features. So I'm gonna just brighten that up a little bit. So let's just add a brightness contrast um, adjustment. And basically this creates the new layer. You make all your adjustments uh, and obviously you can see that it's gonna affect the entire image, which is not what we want, but let's just adjust it for now so that it's optimum for the cow's face. Um, let's make the colors kind of have quite good contrast. So say I'm happy with that. We can straight away firstly see the difference between without and with because the cow's face is much easier to kind of see. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come into the layer mask uh, and the way layer masks work is anything that's black you can't see, anything that's white you can. And um, we're going to just fill that by going to edit and fill with black and click OK. And then you can see the changes have disappeared. I'm then going to come to my brush tool and uh, let's have a look at my brush settings here. So I would normally go to something like transfer and I would make sure that my opacity, jitter, and flow jitter were set to pen pressure with minimum 0%. You can look at your shape dynamics, you can adjust the um, whether you want it to be a hard brush, a soft brush, all that sort of thing, the roundness. Um, let's go to smoothing, um, brush tip shape. Let's bring the hardness down because I like it to be a fairly soft brush. So we'll go with this. And basically when you just paint over, you want to be painting with white and then that will basically bring some of the brightness back and it's all pressure sensitive. Um, and you can basically use the touch ring here to uh, set it to brush size. And then if I want to make the brush larger, I just use my finger or smaller, you know, really nice way of quickly adjusting the size. And if I press hard to bring some of that in and you sometimes have got to press fairly hard um, because it's, you know, it's a nice soft brush and so on. 
you can kind of just bring subtle bits of brightness, nothing much, over the cow's face, brighten up some of that hair and make sure you can see the eyes a bit better and, you know, its nose, bring a bit of shine. Go over its ears. If you, and you really can press down very hard on this if you want to apply more colour. Um, and if there's a bit there where, for example, I accidentally went over it a bit too much, you can flip the colours so that you're painting with black and then just paint back over to kind of undo. And so on. So basically you can you can really kind of adjust how you want that to look. And then you could even further go and say, right, well, I want to go back to the adjustment and I want to say, well, actually I might make that a little bit brighter or not as bright because you've already applied the layer mask you can then afterwards you can manually go in and, and add further you know you can tweak it a little bit if you think actually that looks good and I'm going to adjust my contrast levels say like that or whatever and then you can turn that on and off and you can see how with that adjustment rather than a dark face that you can't sort of see much detail in I've kind of brightened up the cow's face and made it look more consistent with the cow's body kind of thing just brightening up the image slightly. And it's really subtle changes, which you pretty much couldn't really do without a wake without the, the, the pen, it would be really hard. And obviously because you wouldn't have that pressure sensitivity, you know, using a mouse, it would be very, very difficult and it would take a long time um, to try and get the same sort of effect. And it, you know, it, it's so quick. If you do any sort of photography, I'd highly recommend, you know, a, a Wacom tablet or, you know, any other brand of graphic tablet that can do a similar sort of thing, because there are some cheaper options out there. Um, although the Wacom is kind of the industry leader. Um, but yeah, you can make all sorts of changes to the image. Okay, well, that's Photoshop. Um, I'll just show you some other applications that I might use this with. So, um, for example, Final Cut. So this is some stuff from like, different videos and whatnot that I've been working on and basically you can you know use the pen to navigate the timeline of course it's also a, a trackpad surface and it does all the same trackpad gestures that any trackpad like the the Apple trackpad can do if you tap with three fingers you get this radio menu which brings things up like that takes a screenshot you've got step forward and backward you can toggle which display it's mapped to you can save if we go to app shortcuts that brings up this panel which is one of the uh, on-screen menus you can do copy paste page up down and you might think well what would you use it for but if you're using the pen it's just a quick way to click on the buttons instead of having to go to various menus to get to it you know it's just there because it's absolute map absolute it's just easy to quickly click on them and as I was saying because it does all sorts of gestures you can do things like you know zoom out and kind of zoom the timeline in and out um, so it makes it smaller and you can quickly scrub through it and then I've actually set up my buttons if you just rest your finger on you can see what the buttons do I'll just close that app shortcuts for now if you rest your finger on you can actually see um, what all the different buttons do um, and so on and I've got the buttons configured for final cut um, well, it should be configured. This is one of the only things, right? As I was mentioning before, there are some issues with the driver. It should recognize straight away when you're in a different application. Now I'm in Final Cut, my buttons should be configured differently and they are not. Sometimes it takes a little while. I'll see if I can get this to work. Okay, so now it works because it, I had to re like go into something else and come back into it. I've got it set to do slow timeline, zoom, color, fast timeline. So if I do slow timeline, the touch ring basically just goes through one frame at a time so you can like just skip to a very specific point. And then I've set up these buttons here. So it does select clips and then you can go to whichever point in the timeline you want. And then you can use the, the next button down there that would blade the clip and so on. So you can make cuts. It's, it's really, really useful what you can actually do. Um, you know, great tool. You can do so much with it, even for something like video editing, you might not think, but you can really easily work with timelines, you know, really nice um, functionality there. Now, this is Quark Express, um, as I made a video about previously, but you can also use it for things. So for example, um, this is just something I was making about different uh, maneuvers that you would do in a driving test. And you could, you could configure it and do all sorts. Obviously you can use the pen to just pick things up and move them wherever you want around the canvas, which is a really nice way of being able to like manipulate things instead of using a mouse. 
you can also obviously because you can configure this however you want and what I would suggest because a lot of the buttons and the, the touch ring and so on are generally configured to keyboard shortcuts rather than specific things you generally configure them to a set of keyboard commands so um, it's worth learning the keyboard shortcuts for the specific applications that you you're using you know so for example if you use Quark Express there's loads of websites out there just google it and find out a list of keyboard shortcuts and then you can apply those for example you can have the touch ring set so that it adjusts the size of the font so if you move your finger in that direction it makes the font bigger and that way it makes it smaller for example you know really nice features things you know that you could use um, you know you could also use it so for example if I want to rotate the image so let's set this to rotate and say I want to come here right and I want to rotate the image I can use the touch ring to kind of quickly rotate the image around which is really nice of course you can also use the trackpad and it's just a nice feature that you can do um, you know that you can kind of rotate things move them around you can do all sorts like you could use it so that when you use, use the touch ring it cycles through your tools or like I say you could use it to select a color you know there's font size you can have it set to do so many different things um, it really is useful so it's not just for necessarily doing brushwork in Photoshop and I'll also show you one final uh, use so if you're familiar with kind of UML and software design, this, these are basically a couple of different types of um, requirements modeling. So we've got here some use case diagrams um, and an activity diagram. Oh, well, partial activity diagrams and things. I've just dragged some symbols in here before, but you can use this to really quickly, um, you know, like work with a canvas. So this is uh, OmniGraffle. And you can use it to select things, move them around. You can, if you're going to create a line, you can come up to your line tool here. You can, you know, quickly draw a line to exactly where you want it it's, it's you know it's a really good way of being able to kind of move things around and select things and so on and it, it really is useful you know you can configure it so that you can use the touch ring to rotate things on the canvas and then you've also got scroll so you can scroll around the canvas you, know, you can do all sorts with it it's actually really really useful you can configure these buttons to do anything as I've mentioned and it really really is very versatile um, I mean, I would say that it's kind of a graphical tool. If you're only going to use it, you know, if maybe if you only work in Word documents or something, I don't know, it's up to you. I generally, at the moment at least, always have a, a mouse handy purely because I find that it can sometimes be a little bit buggy. You know, it's just worth pointing that out. It can have problems. Um, and, you know, therefore, sometimes you just have to have that mouse just in case it was to crash on you. As I mentioned, it doesn't quite seem to work with Sketch yet. It works fine with XD and most of the Adobe applications, or at least all the ones I've tried, it works fine with. You know, so it is a really useful tool. And I, highly, I would highly recommend it. So, if you have any questions, please do leave a comment. And I'd also love to hear what you use your Wacom tablet for. So, you know, if you're watching this video, you have a Wacom tablet of any sort, let me know what tablet you use and what you would use it for. You know, any particular uses that maybe I haven't thought of. Please do let me know. And, you know, if you'd like to see a tutorial on how you could use this with a specific application or anything like that, again, leave a comment and I'll see what I can do. Okay, well, you know, thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. Please thumbs it up if you'd like to do that. And as always, please subscribe for more videos like this coming your way very soon. And if you click the bell icon, you'll get notifications. And do check the video description for links to anything mentioned in this video. Okay, well, thanks for watching. And bye for now.